Now, before you start, okay, can I get you all to write the hypothesis first? So the hypothesis in this case, of course, is a prediction. All right, what is what are you trying to find out? Can you guess this? You're going to test whatever you are trying to predict. Okay, so can you all write this down first? Okay, this is the hypothesis, which is actually in pink. Okay, so put a dash here as well. So the what, the parachute. Yes, today we're going to make a parachute, okay? The what, the time taken. You're going to also observe whether which one will fall to the ground faster. Which one will take a longer time to fall to the ground. Okay, so you can... You can say, the is it the smaller the parachute or is it the larger the parachute? Will it take a shorter time to for it to fall to the ground or will it take a longer time for it to fall to the ground? Okay, now, do you all have your materials for today? I think today's materials are much more on hand, right? Which means you probably have all these at home. So these are the materials that I have on hand as well. Okay, I will do a little bit here and there to guide you all, okay? So I have trash bags, okay? But for you, just use a plastic bag. Why I use trash bags? Because they're big, so it's easier to cut, okay? So what you need, right? If you were to read this whole experiment, have you all read it or not? Step 1 to step 10, Okay? So let me just summarize this. You, you actually need two large squares. I know y'all have not cut it yet, okay? So I'm going to give you time to cut it out. You definitely need a long ruler, okay? If you use a short ruler, it'll be slightly more difficult. Huh? So use a longer ruler is better. But if you, if you only have short ruler, it's fine, okay? What you need to do, you just have to cut out a 30 by 30 cm square. You will just try to measure this out and cut it out until you have two different uh, parts. For those of you who are done, right, you might want to cut out your strings. Okay, so you got to cut two long pieces of string, 45 cm each. Okay, it needs to be long, all right, just in case, all right, because if it's too, cannot be too short, uh, if it's too short, you have, your parachute will not be able to form. So just take out about, just measure about 45 cm and then you cut it. Now, so let me tell you what is step, you all should be done, okay, are you all done cutting all your trash bags ready or your plastic? Okay, so here's the important thing, you might be wondering, how to tie a knot? onto each corner of the square, okay? So, of course, you label your corners first, uh, A, B, C, D in clockwise direction, okay? Now, what is step three? Now, watch, because uh, in class, a lot of my students ask me to help tie the knot, but in online class, I cannot help you all, okay? So, you need to look at how I'm tying the knot. Uh. Now, please don't tie it too out, okay? The knot is just for you to secure the string. Later, you're going to tie the string over the knot. So the knot is just there to make sure the string has a better grip when you tie the string over it, okay? So tie a knot onto each corner. So you have four corners, right? How are you going to tie? Watch, ah. Huh? Okay, I think you all have to look here, okay? So this is the knot. I'm going to make sure my knot is only at this very end. Okay, not so in. Please don't put it so in. If it's too in, your parachute will be very small. Then it, there's no point cutting a 30 by 30 square. Okay, so I take this. What do I do to tie the knot easier? I twist it. Okay, twist it so it's much easier to tie the knot. Okay, twist it accordingly. This is only one corner. Huh? Later, you all must do for four corners. Okay, watch. And then after that, I just use my finger. Of course, my finger is fatter. Yours, your finger should be smaller than mine. Okay, go around. Okay. Go around it. Go through the loop. Okay. And just tighten it like that. Okay, so you should just have four corners being tight. Dun -dun, I have already four corners here. Then after that, make sure your corners are right. Lah. Basically, your other end of the string must be diagonal, must go to, must tie to here. So once you're done with the four corners, is the string part is very easy already. Right. 
Okay, so my model is this. I did not tie the sweet around it, uh, but you're supposed to get something like that. Then, right, the string, right, I mean the sweet or eraser, right, it has to be tight here. So this is your parachute, it must be tight here. Secure the eraser or the sweet here in the middle. Tape it together like that with the string. So let's talk about the precaution first, okay? While you are doing, what did I say earlier? Look at number one. I said that the sweets must have the same mass or whatever object that you use to attach it to the X part, to the string. All right? Whatever you use, please write down that that object must have the same mass. Correct or not? I told you already, you cannot have different objects on different parachute because that will be an unfair test. The second precaution that I can write is the strings must, the string should be tight a similar distance away from all four corners. You cannot have strings that, that is shorter in one end and, the, and longer at the other end. Then it will affect the parachute for sure. Okay, the strings must all have the same distance. The last one that I can think of is the parachute must obviously be dropped from the same height. Again, you cannot have you cannot drop them one higher than the other because then it will be an unfair test already. Then you will have two change variables. So all these are the precautions that you have to take note of. Okay? Can. Observation. So like what I said earlier, what do we observe? So observation usually will answer the hypothesis. Okay, so in this case, we say that the larger the parachute, you can also say the smaller the parachute, but your time taken will be different. So you can just say the larger the size of the parachute, we know the longer the time taken for the parachute to fall to the ground. Come to your explanation. Okay, you might say, hey, isn't this is similar to the exposed surface area one, right? But if you recall your P5 topic, okay, actually we did mention this term that is also tested in your forces topic. Okay? So yes, just now Jaden already said, the larger the parachute, we know that there's going to be more exposed surface area, right? In this case, the parachute in contact with the air, in contact with the surrounding air. But here's the thing. Why do you, why do you then think, right, that the parachute will actually stay in the air for a longer time? Now, let's say you are the one on the parachute, okay, and you and you jump off, right, the aeroplane or something, right? You feel that there's this, there's something pushing against you, right? You will say that's air. There's air pushing against the parachute as well. So if I were to draw out this particular parachute here for you all to see, so let's say this is a big parachute, all right? So this is a parachute. So and then you have this person here, okay? Now, as he's parachuting down, there's actually this thing acting against the parachute. Is it air pressure? No, it's not air pressure. Like, uh, good try. We don't use air pressure. There's this thing that is allowing this person to stay in the air for a longer time. And that's why he will land safely. He will land slowly. Okay, this thing that is pushing is actually a type of force. It's actually called air resistance. Okay, that's why I bring up this experiment because this experiment talks about air resistance. Air resistance is also a form of friction and friction is a what? Friction is a force. So how do I explain this? I say that the larger the size of the parachute, the more the exposed surface area in contact with the surrounding air. That's one. Hence, right, there's going to be more air resistance. So this is the important part here. There's going to be more air resistance acting on the parachute. That's why it can stay in the air for a longer time. Now, the next thing I added, please, you have to write this down, all right? I say that air resistance is a form of friction, which is actually a force. So friction is a force, which also means you can say air resistance is a force as well. Okay? And what is friction? Friction is the action when one surface or object rubs against another object or another surface. And friction opposes motion. But what is friction? Friction will always go the opposite direction. 
So the meaning of opposes is goes the opposite direction of. 